de-conflictions between Israeli and Hamas forces continue intensively. The Hamas militia has incurred the wrath of God. The soldiers of the Qasem Brigade, known as the Armed Wing of Hamas, were planning to an attack on the Israeli army using underground tunnels they had created. However, the heavy rainfall that started late at night and the resulting floods brought the end of the Hamas militia. The Israeli military has increased its air operations against Hezbollah and Hamas forces in Syria, Lebanon, and the Gaza Strip. In the last few days, an intensive airstrike has been carried out against Israel from inside the Syrian borders. Although most of these attacks are prevented by Iron Dome air defense systems, some of the missiles sent can also hit areas where civilians live. The Israel Defense Forces were about to enter the borders of Gaza to put an end to these attacks on Israel by Hamas and Hezbollah forces from three different fronts and to put an end to Hamas forces in the Gaza Strip. The Israel Defense Forces aim to launch this operation as soon as possible in case Hamas forces carry out an attack on the Israeli army stationed on the borders of the Gaza Strip. Israel's first target was the underground tunnels used by Hamas soldiers to enter the Gaza Strip. However, bad weather conditions prevented the start of this ground operation. What happened next was engraved on the mines as an indication that God was on the side of Israel in this war. As it is known, there was a major flood disaster in the regions where Israel and Palestine are located. After hours of rainfall, flooding occurred in many areas, especially in the capital Tel Aviv. However, these rains and the resulting flooding disaster that occurred at once brought about the end of the Hamas militias deployed in the Gaza Strip. According to the statements of the Israel Defense Forces officials, the underground tunnels used by Hamas were flooded with water. The entrances and exits of the underground tunnels, which were filled with water, were completely closed. As it is known, Hamas soldiers used these tunnels not only as a shipping route, but also as warehouses. Hamas forces use these tunnels both as an escape route and as ammunition and weapons depots when they are under intense attack. However, according to information obtained from regional sources, these weapons and ammunition in the underground tunnels became completely unusable after the heavy rain and flooding that occurred at night. According to the claims, after heavy rainfall and flooding in the tunnels, a small part of the tunnel collapsed on the Hamas militia located in the tunnel. After this interesting incident, some local newspapers operating in Israel shared news under the headline, Divine Justice Has Found Its Place. But will this divine justice also help Israel to crush Hamas? As it is known, the Israel Defense Forces have appealed to the civilian population living in Gaza for the ground operation they will launch against Gaza, warning them many times to evacuate their homes and go to the south of the region. It is known that aircraft belonging to the Israeli Air Force have issued warnings by distributing leaflets from the sky for civilians living in Gaza City to evacuate the city. In the same way, Israeli Army spokesman Avache Adre addressed the residents of the Gaza Strip, stating that they should leave the city center soon and gave a six-hour deadline. As of now, the evacuation period given by Israel to the people of Gaza has expired. The Israeli army has completed preparations for a ground operation to be launched into the Gaza Strip, but subsequent events caused this ground operation to be postponed for several days. The discovery that these underground tunnels used by the Hamas militia were flooded and the continuation of this flooding disaster in the Gaza Strip led the Israel Defense Forces to postpone this ground operation for several days. The Israel Defense Forces believes that after this flood disaster, the weapons and ammunition kept by Hamas forces in the tunnels have become unusable. This event, which happened to the Hamas forces, was celebrated enthusiastically by the Israeli people. The Jewish clergy made statements in their speeches that this was part of God's plan. Do you think the promised land is really in this area? Will the Israeli army be able to take back these promised lands? While this tension between Israel and Hamas continues, the latest statements made by the Iranian foreign ministry have become a topic of the agenda all over the world. It seems that the war process that has been going on for years between Israel and Iran 
has led to an opportunity for Iran. The Israeli airstrikes against military headquarters and unmanned combat aircraft production facilities located within the Iranian borders have led to a further escalation of this tension between Iran and Israel. Now, Iranian Foreign Minister Hossein Emir Abdullahian has made threatening speeches against Israel. In a statement, the Iranian Foreign Minister said that those who want to prevent the spread of the war in Gaza should prevent Israel's attacks. The Iranian minister, who expressed that they informed Israel that tomorrow will be too late if it does not stop the crimes it is committing in Gaza, made a threatening statement against Israel, saying that Israel has an opportunity to make amends in the coming hours, otherwise no one knows what will happen in the coming hours. As deconfliction between Iran and Israel continues to escalate, soldiers of the Qasem Brigade are trying to carry out attacks on Israeli military November territories with kamikaze unmanned combat aircraft. However, the drone attacks of the Qas November Brigade soldiers are being successfully blocked by the Iron Dome air defense systems for now. On the other hand, deconfliction between Israel and Syria has reached a much different dimension. After the Israeli army carried out airstrikes on the airports located in Damascus and Aleppo, a large number of missiles were sent to Israeli territory from within the Syrian borders. The interesting part of the job is that Russia has also been indirectly involved in this war. Russia, which has a large number of military and headquarters within the borders of Syria, has warned Israel many times to stop these attacks. After the recent Israeli attacks, the Russian government has made numerous shipments of missiles and artillery to the Syrian regime. As countries such as Russia, Iran, Syria and Lebanon began to get involved in this war, a move also came from Turkey. Turkish President Erdogan reacted very harshly to the U.S. sending an aircraft carrier to Israel for aid purposes. The U.S. aircraft carriers sent to the eastern Mediterranean regions are one of the issues that bother Turkey. Turkish naval forces in response to this move by the United States announced that they will conduct exercises in the eastern Mediterranean between 16 to 20 DC. Turkey will go to the eastern Mediterranean region with a large number of navy ships and anchor here. It seems that Turkey is trying to intimidate the United States with this move it has made.